Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at how to factor complex trinomials, and we're going to use something called decomposition. Don't worry, it's not as tricky as it sounds. It's just a big word. Now, what is a complex trinomial? It's just a trinomial where you have, like in the past, I have other videos on how to factor a trinomial, and in this case, um, in those cases, the this coefficient right here would be 1, so it would just be x squared plus 5x minus 2, and then we'd factor it um, really quickly. In these ones, you have to deal with this coefficient here of 3. This, I guess sometimes it's called the a value. If this is a, this would be b, and this would be c. So anyway, let's, let's learn how to do these kinds of questions, because that's probably what you're here to learn. So step number one, you always look for a common factor. So look amongst all of these three terms here, and if they could all be divided by a number, you would factor that out in front. But in this case, 3, 5, and 2 do not have a common factor. And that will often be the case, but sometimes you get a common factor. That's why I had to write that there. Okay? So here's how you do factoring by decomposition. You start by multiplying the 3 by the 2, or the first term, by the last term, the coefficients that is. So 3 times 2 is negative 6. It's a negative 2, okay? I forgot to mention that. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And the number in the middle, just like regular trinomial factoring, is going to go right here. And just like regular trinomial factoring, we're going to come up with two numbers that multiply to give us negative 6, and those exact same two numbers that we get right here have to add to make 5. Okay? I'll change the color here. So let's come up, let's just say what numbers multiply to make 6, and you might say 2 times 3. Oh, it has to be a negative 6, because 2 plus 3 is 5, and that's great. And uh, I should close that email program. But anyway, 2 plus 3 makes 5, but it doesn't multiply to make negative 6. And if we changed one of these to a negative, negative 2 times 3, that would work for here, but it wouldn't work down here. You'd get negative 2 plus 3, that equals 1. So all of that's no good. So think of another two numbers that multiply to make 6. You might tell me 6 and 1. That's cool. Now 6 plus 1 is 7. We want it to be 5. So in our minds we can say, well, 6 minus 1 is 5. So let's make this a negative and let's see if that works. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, and 6 plus negative 1 is 5. So we know that 6 and negative 1 are the two numbers that we need inside here. Okay, so the next step is decomposition is when you break something down. What we're doing is we're breaking down this middle term into two other terms, so two things that add up to make 5x. And we just came up with those two. It was 6 and negative 1. But you have to write them with the x, okay? So it's 6x minus, now you could write 1x or just x. Just remember there is an invisible 1 there in case you're confused. Where did the 1 go? It's actually invisible. It's very rarely put here. So I'm just going to leave it out. So 6x minus x is actually 5x. And then let's write down what we have left. We have the minus 2 there on the end, and we have a 3x squared on the front. And it's a positive 6, so I'm going to put a plus here. So now, the next step with decomposition, it looks a little confusing because now we have four terms. And normally we'd put these two together to get the 5x, but then we'd be working backwards. We're trying to figure out how to factor this thing. We're trying to come up with something that can be put into two brackets that would multiply to make this. So here's how you do it. <laughs> what you do is group the first two terms. And by the way, some of you might be saying, does it matter if you put the negative x here and the 6 over here and the 6x over here? It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer no matter which, which way you put these two. It's pretty cool. So we're going to group these two. And then we're also going to group these two. And we're going to take a common factor out of each one. So I'll get it back to, uh, where's that other pen I was just using? There it is. So first look at the first two. Here's 3x squared and 6. What is a common factor that could come out of these two? 
Well, first of all, as far as the coefficients go, 3 and 6, the 3 is definitely a common factor. And an x is also a common factor. And then in brackets, let's write down what would be left. So 3x times x would give us 3x squared. And 3x times 2, 3x times 2 would give us 6x. So we've just broken this down. We've factored these two, and we've written them like this. Okay, let's move to the next one. We have negative x minus 2. Now, what could we factor out? What could we factor out from these two? There's no real common factor here. One thing I do want to tell you, though, is because there's a negative x here, we want this x, we want, we want the term to be positive inside the brackets. So we're going to pull out, we're going to pull out a negative 1, Okay, if we pull out a negative 1 and then put it in brackets, because there's no common factor, but negative 1 is allowed, there's always a factor of 1, right? And if we make it a negative 1, what that does is it changes this x to a positive x, and it changes also the sign of this negative 2 to a positive 2. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that this bracket and this bracket have the exact same thing inside. They each have an x plus 2. And that's a really good sign that you're doing things correctly. If at this step you get the exact same thing in the brackets, you know you've done things correctly. So now, right, well, I guess I could say the quick version of, of this is just write down what you've got here, x plus 2, and then write down the leftovers beside it in brackets. Okay? If you do that, if you multiply this all out, you will end up getting 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. If you want, you can push pause and try it just to see if it works. But that is decomposition right there. Okay? There are other ways to do this. In fact, I'm going to show a video after this that shows a really a way that my students like the best. It's called the box method. I know there's there's many different methods, but the box method is super fast and yeah, it get it helps you come up with the same answer. Some of you may have been wondering, why did you just write down the 3x minus 1 in brackets here? Well, what we did is we look at this whole expression and we say, what is a common factor in this expression right here? Well, the common factor is x plus 2. So we take the x plus 2 outside the brackets. Let's call this the brackets right here. We take the x plus 2 outside the brackets, even though it itself is already in brackets. You write it right here, and then you write down what, what's left over right here. Anyway, um, if you were to change the question to say 3x, I don't know, b minus b, then if you were to take a common factor out, you'd get b there, the b being the x plus 2, and then you'd write down what's left over, 3x minus 1. And that's how that 3x minus 1 ended up there. You know what? This may be confusing things for you, so I will stop there. Let's go on to another question rather than continue to make it more confusing. Hmm. Okay, step number one. Look at the first term and the last term and multiply them. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. Okay, we want two numbers that multiply to make negative 30, but add to make the middle term, which is 7. So these same two numbers have to add to make 7. So what numbers would multiply to make 30 and add to make 7? There's a little bit of guessing we're going to have to do, like 15 and 2. Yeah, that makes 30, but it's never going to make 7. 15 minus 2 is 13. That's not going to work. Uh, what about 6 and 5? Well, 6 times 5 can make 30, but it would never make a 7. So we're going to quickly whip through this. Um, can, maybe some of you have thought of it already. Um, here it is. I think I have it. 10 and 3. That makes 30, and it also could make a 7, as long as it was 10 minus 3. So let's put the negative here. 10 times negative 3 is negative 30, and 10 plus negative 3 will give us 7. So we know we've come up with the two terms that we need to put here and here. Okay, so 10x, doesn't matter what order you put them in, Okay, you could have the negative 3x here and the 10x here. It doesn't really matter. Let's write the first and the last term. 
There we go. And now, remember the next step. All you do is group these two, then group these two. And remember, we're going to factor out a negative so that we end up with a positive first term here. So let's go back to the 6x squared and the 10x. What would be the largest or the greatest common factor from these two? Well, you could factor out a 2. Whoops, we want to use I want to use that sort of gray looking pen. There we go. You could factor out a 2. You could factor out an x. What would be left in the brackets? 2x times what would give us 6x squared? Well, 3x. 2x times what would give us 10x? 5. So far so good. Now on this one, we can factor out, well, unfortunately there's nothing we can factor out that is um, like there's no coefficient or number that we can factor out except the number 1. And we're going to factor out a negative 1 just like in the other example. Negative 1. And if there's a negative 1 out there, all that does is change the signs here. It becomes positive 3x plus 5. And do you remember how we can tell if we're doing things correctly? There's something really cool that appears. You get the same thing in the brackets both here and right here. It that's a really good sign that things are going well. And if you remember quickly how to do the last step, all you do is go write that in brackets, 3x plus 5, and then write down the leftovers right beside it, 2x minus 1. If we were to multiply this all out, we should get 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. And you can push pause and verify that if you want, but I do want to do one more question with you just to make sure we have this, okay? And it might be a question that has a little trick to it. So let's have a look. If you look at this question here, we could we could go 10 times 4 is 40 and we could start working, but after a little while we would realize something is wrong. There would be something wrong. And what we would see is wrong is that <laughs> the very first step you should do when you're looking at any question like this is can you factor first? Can you come up with the greatest common factor first? And there is there is, you could divide each one of these terms by 2, okay? And if you did that, if you factored out a 2, you would be left with 5x squared minus 11x plus 2. Do you see how that happened? Now, there's no common factor that can come out. The 2 is there already, and now we continue to do this question just like we were doing the other questions. So you multiply the first and the last terms. 5 times 2 is 10. So we need two numbers that multiply to make 10. And they have to add up, two numbers that add up to make negative 11. Okay, well, if you put 5 times 2 here, that makes 10, but 5 and 2 will never make 11 by adding. So let's think of something else. Let's think, what about 10? What about 10 and 1? Um, I like to change the uh, I like to change the font or the font color here. What about 10 and 1? And by the way, if you multiply those, you get 10. The problem is 10 and 1. If you add them up, you get 11. We want negative 11. So let's change the signs and see if we can deal with it. What's negative 10 times negative 1? You still get 10 negative 10 and negative 1, if you add those, negative 10 plus negative 1, you will get negative 11. So we have now split this up into negative 10x and negative x, or negative 1x. Okay, write the first and the last terms. And by the way, this 2, we can write it up later, we can put the 2 later, but I'm just going to write it again just so we don't forget about it, okay? I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, let's group the first two terms and then we'll group the last two terms and we'll see if the magic happens that we're looking for. Okay, the common factor between 5x squared <coughs> excuse me, and minus 10x, well, it could be a 5 and an x. And if we write down what's left over, yes, we're doing another bracket, that would just be x here minus 2 x minus 2, because 5x times negative 2 would give us negative 10x. 
And on the next one, remember I don't want a negative sign in the brackets, so I'm going to factor out. There's nothing I can really factor here, so I'm factoring out a negative 1. And the reason why is it'll change the sign, it'll change this x to a positive x, which is what I wanted, and it'll change the 2 to a negative 2. Okay, so if you look carefully, you will notice that we now have x minus 2 here and x minus 2, and we're basically done this question. So the 2 in front, I'm going to leave the 2 alone, then I'm going to write down x minus 2, then I'm going to multiply 5x minus 1. And if we were to multiply this all out, we should come up with 10x squared minus 22x plus 4. Since this is the end of the video, it's up to you if you want to watch this, but I'm going to quickly multiply it out to see if we actually get that, if we multiplied this all out. So I'm going to start by multiplying all of this. Um, I could go 2 times this, and then I'll do that. I'll go 2 times this, and then I'll take my answer and multiply it by 5x minus 1. So that'd be 2x minus 4. I'm going to put it in brackets. We want to multiply that by 5x minus 1. And let's see, that would be 20x squared. So far, so good. 20x times negative 1 is negative, sorry, 2x. Negative 2x. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20x. And negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. And if I put these two together, this is good. I was scared I was getting the wrong answer here, people. I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to edit this video. It's such a bummer having to do that. I'm putting the two like terms together, plus 4. Now remember, 20x squared minus 22x plus 4. Let's have a look at the top. That is exactly what we started with. It's kind of like a magic trick when it all works out. It's a very good feeling. So that is how you factor complex trinomials using decomposition. I recommend you checking out my next video, which is how to do this exact same thing using the box method, just because the box method, in my opinion, is really fun. So I hope you have a chance to look at that. It'd be worth your time. Take care.